Good afternoon, class. We are looking at section 3.2, the derivatives as a function. So we covered the derivatives and rates of change. We're gonna look at the derivatives as a function. We move on to basic differentiation formulas, the product and quotient rules, the chain rule, derivatives of the log functions, differentials. So just to remind you, this is the good old slope of a line when two points are given. We are looking at the blue line, two points are given, and we can write them in various formats. If this is A, this is X, we have this one. If this distance is H, A, we have this one. If it's A and this one is B, we have this one. All of them are rise over run. So you have two points, you can find this slope. We are interested in a tangent line and tangent line has only one point. So how do you find the slope? Then you may you bring the Q closer and closer to P and the secant line, as it gets closer and closer to the tangent line in a limit sense gives rise to the slope of a tangent. Therefore, M of tangent is the limit of M of P Q as Q approaches P. If you're looking at this graph, as X approaches A, if you're looking at this formula, as H approaches zero, if you're looking at this formula, and they all mean the same thing. And so M or F prime of A has this definition, the limit of F of X minus F of A over X minus A as X approaches A, or the limit of F of A plus H minus F of A over H as H approaches zero. What you're looking at here is the point slope formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x sub. There's nothing brand new here. And now in the new section, we are going to look at the general derivative. This is what we have seen. We have considered f a prime at a fixed number a at a specific point. And it has this definition. Now, if we make it generalized, as you may remember, one of the last questions we did in the previous section, I kept it at A. So in essence, we let A vary. If we replace A by a variable X, this one becomes this. So F prime of X, is the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches zero. So replace the a with x. What about this one? If you wanna use this formula, you're gonna keep it as a and do not change the a to a number. When you're done, the result will be as a function of a, f prime as a function of a. And now you can change the a to x to make it f prime of x if need be. Now, given f of x, then some common alternative notations for the derivatives are as follows. That's important to know. f prime of x, y prime, dy dx, df dx, d dx of f of x, capital D of f of x, d sub x sub f of x. This refers to the fact that we are taking the derivative with respect to the independent variable x. So the symbol capital D or d dx are called differentiation operators because they indicate the operation of differentiation, which is the process of calculating a derivative. We can rewrite the definition of derivative in Leibniz's notation in the following form, dy dx, is the limit of delta y over delta x as delta x approaches zero. As you may recall, Leibniz and Newton are given the credit uh, as inventors of calculus. And uh, although that's really not true, calculus has been in the making for over 2,500 years. So that's his notation. 
And also we have this definition of function f is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. It is differentiable at an open interval of a to b or a to infinity or negative infinity to a or negative to positive infinity if it's differentiable at every number in that interval. So that's the definition. What we are going to do, we are going to use this definition to find f prime of x. How to re remember we've done questions like this. We can find an equation of a tangent line. We've already done that. But the only difference in this section, instead of calculating f prime of a directly, we're going to calculate f prime of x and then plug in. As you know, we need two things. We need a pair and then we need the slope. So can anybody tell me what is the pair here? Eight comma. What is the y coordinate here? Anybody? Five. Beautiful. Three times eight, 24 plus one, 25. The square root of that is five. So as I mentioned before, you don't have to give us a pair. As long as we have x, we can put it back into the original function find the y coordinate, we have the pair. The next thing is to find the slope of a tangent line. To find the slope, first, we are going to use this definition and differentiate. So f prime of x is the limit of f of x plus h. So what is f of x plus h? The square root of three times, replace the x with x plus h, and then write plus one. Minus f of x, just write this one, over h, as h approaches zero. And it's all algebraic steps. Needless to say, if you plug in, you get zero over zero. And the technique is conjugate. Change this to a plus, multiply and divide by it. So what we are looking at is A minus B times A plus B, which results in A squared minus B squared, meaning this comes out minus this comes out. What about the denominator? It's very important to keep it intact just the way it is as a product. In other words, we don't touch the denominator. This comes out minus this comes out according to this formula. So we continue with our algebraic steps. We are going to distribute and we get 3x plus 3h. Then we have a plus one. Then we have a minus 3x minus one. Three x cancels out negative three x. Positive one cancels out negative one. The only thing left in the numerator is three h. And remember, it is the zero in the denominator which is bothering us. And now the h drops from the top and the bottom. And so we end up with the limit as h approaches zero of number three at top only with this radical and this one, which is three times square root of three times x plus h plus one. This one is three x plus one. Now it's time to apply the h. So if I replace the h with zero, the first one becomes three x plus one, which is identical to the second one that therefore we have two of them. This is f prime of x. So if the question was find f prime of x, we are done. But the next part is asking to find the equation of a tangent line. We need to find the slope. So what is this slope? It's important to know this 
represents infinitely many different slopes. So what is this slope? You plug in eight here. So F prime of eight is M. M is F prime of eight. Can anybody tell me what is that equal to? What is this slope equal to? Three over 10. Beautiful. If I plug in eight here, I get three times eight, 24 plus one, 25. We already know this is five. Two times five is 10. So three over 10. M is F prime of eight. That means replace this one with eight and it gives you three over 10. So just to make sure if we plug in eight in here, then we get this one, this slope. Y minus Y one equals M times X minus X sub one. This is the point slope. Therefore, y minus five equals three over 10 times x minus eight. When we distribute three over 10 over the parentheses, we get three over 10 x minus 24 divided by 10, which is a 12 over five. So you multiply these two, you get minus 12 over five. You're going to move the negative five and make it positive five. Positive five is 25 over five. And the final answer is y equals three over 10 x plus 13 over five. What I wanna add here is that this pair, meaning eight comma five, belongs to the original function. So if you plug in eight, you should get five. This also belongs to the tangent line. So if you plug in eight, you get 24 divided by 10, which is 12 over five plus 13 over five, which is 25 over five, which is five. So you're supposed to get the pair in both <coughs> the original function and the tangent line, both of them. The graph of a function f is given. We want to use that to sketch the graph of f prime, a rough sketch. So a few things we need to know. When you want to graph that, you look at the easy points first. This is a local mean. This is a local max. This is a local mean. And when we have a relative max or mean, local or relative, F prime is zero. The reason why, because you can draw a horizontal tangent line. Then when F prime is positive, F is increasing. When F prime is negative, F is decreasing. And I'm going to remind you of the basic lines, as you recall, in this case, M is positive. In this case, M is negative. Everybody remembers that. So when F prime is positive, remember the slope of a line represents its derivative F prime. The function is increasing. And when it's negative, it's decreasing. So in this case, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. Another way of understanding increasing, decreasing is as follows. As we go from left to right, we know X gets larger in both cases. What happens to the Y? If the Y gets larger too, it's called increasing. If Y gets smaller, 
it's called decrease. So when we look at the graph, a couple of important things happen. Again, these three points, the slope is zero, the slope is zero, the slope is zero. What about this one? This is made up, uh, you don't have to worry about that, but the way it was made up is that they tried to do a good job of drawing a tangent line. Then they pick up two points like this point and this point, and they calculate the slope of this line becomes almost, it's not equal, it's almost, it's an approximation three halves. So what does it mean? This one, whatever the X is here, corresponds to zero, same thing here, same thing here for F prime. This one corresponds to five comma three halves. So if we were to look at this point, corresponds to zero for F prime, same thing here. This portion of the graph is decreasing, meaning F prime is negative, meaning it's below the X axis. So looking something like this. This portion of the graph, it's increasing, meaning F prime is positive, which means above the x-axis. But as we go above the x-axis, we have to go back to zero because at A corresponds to zero and so does at B. So we have to go back. We may not know when, but this is a rough sketch. This portion, of the graph also decreasing. F prime is negative, which means we are going to go down below the X axis. But the reason we have to come back up because B corresponds to zero, so does C. We have to come back up at some point. And finally, this portion of the graph is increasing, which means F prime is positive. And so we continue above the X axis. So this is a rough sketch, but let's look at a better and more detailed answer here. First, again, F prime, is negative and decreasing here. So it's decreasing here. F prime is positive and it's increasing here, increasing here. And it will look like that. Notice A corresponds to A prime, zero. B corresponds to B prime, zero. C corresponds to C prime, zero. Specifically, this point has coordinates five and three halves or five and 1.5. Again, this one, is decreasing below the x-axis, increasing. So you go up, but you have to come back down, back to zero. This portion is decreasing. This is below the x-axis entirely, but at B zero, at C zero, so it has to come back up and it continues upward because it's increasing. All right, the graph of a function f is given and we want to come up with the graph of its derivative. So we start with the simplest example when we have a line, as we know, the derivative of a line becomes its slope. So all you have to do calculate the slope and whatever the slope is a horizontal line with that equation. So first and foremost, this is zero, zero. This is one, three. By the way, notice the scale along the x-axis and the y-axis is not the same. This is one, this is six. That's why this is one and three. So 
uh, slope is rise over run, uh, three minus zero over one minus zero, so m equals three. So all you have to do, draw the line y equals three. That's all there is to it. So draw the line y equals three. Let's make it a tad more interesting. What about this one? First, this point corresponds to zero. This point corresponds to zero. This portion is increasing. That means F prime is positive. So it's above the x-axis. This portion is decreasing. F prime is negative. That means below the x-axis, but it has to come back up to hit the zero. And This portion is increasing. I'm going to use a green one. Again, F prime is positive, and that gives you the portion above the x axis. So it looks like that. Let me clean up the mess. Makes it easier to see. So we have those two points. This is the graph, and the two points that correspond to x-intercepts. These two points correspond to x-intercepts for f prime. In this case, it's easy to see that at this point, levels are This portion is increasing. F prime is positive, so it's above the x axis, something like this. This portion is decreasing. F prime is less than zero, so it comes below the x axis. And if we were to graph this, a little bit more precisely, it will look like this. So we should have an easy time sketching the graph of F prime or a rough sketch. A function fails to be differentiable if it has a corner, discontinuity, or a vertical tangent line. Why is that? A corner or kink, the graph of F has no tangent line at this point because the left and right limits are different. How do you come up with the tangent line? How do you draw that? Which way? Same thing happens here. How do you come up with the tangent line at the given point A? So if F is not continuous at A, then F is not differentiable at A. So at any discontinuity, for instance, a jump, discontinuity F fails to be differentiable. Obviously, this is a jump. When you take a limit of F prime as X approaches A and it goes to infinity, uh, that means in an absolute value sense, that means either infinity or negative infinity. So the graph of a function f of x has a vertical tangent line at the point A. If the limit of f prime of x as x approaches A is negative infinity, or the limit of f prime of x as x approaches A is infinity, as long as it's one of them, we have the vertical tangent line. Um, as for a cusp, which is similar to this, you can't figure out how to draw a tangent line. However, the difference is that the limit from one side of A goes to infinity, the other side goes to negative infinity. In this case, 
on the right side goes to infinity and then the left side goes to negative infinity. You may have a hard time seeing that. But nevertheless, when the graph of the function becomes vertical and then virtually doubles back on itself, such pattern signals the presence of what is known as a vertical cusp. In general, we say that the graph of f of x has a vertical cusp at a f of a, if i f f means if and only if, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is infinity, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is minus infinity, or vice versa. Both sides do not have the same result. In other words, this one, they both have negative or positive infinity, but this one, they don't. Now, something like this, it's fairly simple to figure out. So I want to look at this one to see the graph of a function f is given, where and why the function is not differential. So if you look at this point, clearly we have a discontinuity. So at x equals zero, we have a discontinuity. The function is not differential. At this point three, we have a vertical tangent line. If you are going to mix that with the sharp corner, I'll explain it in a moment how you can distinguish between the two. If you look at this case, clearly this is negative one. At negative one, we have a discontinuity, so it's not differentiable. At two, we clearly have a sharp corner. We have a case that it's not differentiable. So how do you distinguish between a sharp corner and a vertical tangent line. As you can see, this looks like a V-shape. Clearly it's a V-shape, whereas here it's going up from both sides. And that's the main difference between the two. You should be able to tell which one you are dealing with. We have a graph of a function. We want to use it to sketch the graph of its derivative f prime. So first notice we have a one, two, three, and four line segment. So for each line segment, we need to calculate the slope, which means we need the pairs. So assuming the pairs are as follows, this is negative three, one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, three, one, assuming that's the case. So if I want to calculate the slope for this one, rise over run, y sub two minus y sub one, that means zero minus one, over x sub two minus x sub one, minus one minus negative three, and I get negative one over two, or negative one half. So if we just had this one, and it continued indefinitely, then we would draw a horizontal line y equals negative one half. It would be done. We do the same thing for the other parts. So first and foremost, because this is m equals negative one half, I hope you realize this is m equals positive one half. Clearly, we can calculate this slope here becomes positive one, and this one becomes negative one. So again, if we look at this line segment only, and for this line segment, we draw the line y equals negative one half. Where do we stop? Right here, we stop. And we put a hole because there is a sharp corner. It's not different. Sure. So y equals negative one half. Here's the graph and we stopped sharp corner. Now we do exactly the same thing for this one, this one, and this one. This one, m equals one. So y equals one and we have two holes. This one, m equals negative one, y equals negative one, and two holes. This one, m equals positive one half. So the line y equals one half, and we have a hole for the left end. So these are the 
lines, m equals one gives us y equals one, m equals negative one, y equals negative one, and one half gives us y equals one half. And this is how it looks like. Pay attention to the fact, sharp corner, we have a hole. Sharp corner, we have a hole. Sharp corner, we have a hole for this part and this part. All right, let's continue with the differentiation. Needless to say, we are using the definition for this section as of uh, next sections, we can use rules. So we plug in f of x is five x plus one. So f prime is the limit of f of x plus h, five times x plus h plus one minus f of x minus the whole thing, five x plus one over h. It is extremely important to keep this in a parentheses so we know that we distributed accordingly. So we are going to distribute the five. Now everything is algebra now. Five x, five h plus one minus five x minus one. So five x cancels out the negative five x. Positive one cancels out the negative one and the numerator is left with five h. So the limit of 5h over h as h approaches zero, we can drop the h. So limit of five as h approaches zero is a constant, the answer is five, we are done. f of x equals two over x, we wanna differentiate that using this definition, the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h. What is f of x plus h? Two over x plus h minus f of x over h. And again, if you were to plug in, you would get zero over zero. The technique is LCD, the least common denominator. You have one and two fractions. LCD is the product of the denominators. So you're gonna multiply and divide by the product of X and X plus H. First, I wanna discuss the denominator. Nothing happens to it. You keep it as a product. You do not distribute just H times X times X plus H. Remember, since H is approaching zero, H is a problem that you're hoping to get rid of. So that's the bottom. What about the top? When you multiply these two, x plus h goes away, becomes 2x. And you multiply these two, x goes away, becomes minus 2 times x plus h. Again, notice the denominator is a product of a bunch of expressions. And the numerator, we are going to distribute this. We get 2x minus 2x minus 2h. These two cancel each other. The numerator is negative 2h. We drop the h from the top and the bottom. We get the limit of negative 2 over x times x plus h as h approaches 0. We plug in. We get x times x plus zero, or simply x times x, or x squared in the denominator. And we are done. All right, f of x is seven x squared plus four. We want to find f prime of x using the definition. So f prime of x is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h, which means seven times the parentheses x plus h squared plus four minus f of x minus this expression over h. So pay attention to the fact f of x plus h 
becomes seven times X plus H quantity squared plus four. All we have to do is simplify. So what do we do? First, we raise this to the second power. Gives us X squared plus two X H plus H squared. We are going to distribute the seven. So seven X squared plus 14 XH plus seven H squared. Then we write the plus four and we distribute the negative minus seven X squared minus four. So again, seven X squared, 14 XH, seven H squared, write the four, distribute the negative sign. So what happens, seven X squared and minus seven X squared cancel each other. Positive and negative four cancel each other. We are left with 14 X H plus seven H squared in the numerator. We factor the H out from the top. Please understand I can take out seven H but I don't wanna do that because I just wanna get rid of the H. Again, proper factoring would be to take seven H out. I'm gonna put it at top so you can see that. Proper factoring would have been seven H times two X plus H. But I'd rather just take the H out because now I can cancel them out. I have the limit of 14 X plus seven H as H approaches zero. If I replace the H with zero, I get 14x, which is the final answer.